This is the Germont British News, presenting the world to the world. Olympic spotlight turns to Hearn Hill and a great international battle with the 4,000 meters team pursuit. The Italians get away, and now their close rivals, the French. Italy made desperate efforts round the halfway mark, but the French team were getting just that extra turn of speed which counted for so much in the last lap. And here they come, flashing over the finishing line to win new Olympic honours for France. All eyes on Reg Harris, Britain's ace for the 1,000 metre sprint. With his opponent, the young Italian Gella, Harris manoeuvres for position and away they go. Around the back stretch, both men making a supreme effort, but in the final lap, Gellar draws away to beat Harris by half a length. No wonder there's a winning smile by the 18-year-old champion. One of the most picturesque of all Olympic events, the rowing at Henley. The eights go by in the race in which the British crew were runners-up to the USA. Now, the single skulls, a three-cornered fight between Australia, Uruguay and Italy. The Australian champion, Mervyn Wood, soon shot into the lead, and there he stayed to add a decisive Commonwealth triumph to the Henley programme. The double skulls, and now it's Britain's turn, as R.D. Burnell and B.H. Bushnell led the rest of the field, Denmark and Uruguay. Not once did the British pair slacken their pace until they reached the finish, one and a half lengths ahead of Denmark. A grand piece of sculling, marking Britain's second Olympic win at Henley. At Wembley, the last day of track and field events saw the running of the marathon, with more than 40 competitors lining up at the start for the most grueling race of any Olympia. Away they go, the whole field getting a big send-off, and many of the crowd keeping their fingers crossed for the trio who represented Great Britain. One circuit of the track and out of the stadium on the opening stage of the 26 mile run. And as they move down the Olympic way, we leave them and return to the arena for another main event the 400 meters relay. And here we come to the film record, which was to prove that the judges had made an error in disqualifying the American team on their first exchange of baton. We now slow the picture down to prove that the Americans were, in fact, inside their line. On now to the second exchange, and it's a tremendous duel between the Americans and the British, who stay hard on their heels all the way. So the Americans race to victory, only to learn of the disqualification. Later, Lord Burley announced the decision had been reversed, and that the US team had been awarded first place, with Britain second. Back now to the marathon course. Britain's chief hope, Jack Holden, had dropped out, but the flag was still flying as Tom Richards, number 266, battled doggedly on. Other nations were also doing nobly as the race continued to take its toll. Back in the arena, it's the start of the 1600 meters relay and the prospect of a win for the Jamaican team. Here's the second exchange and Arthur Wint waiting to carry on. 
The next American goes well into the lead. Wint goes after him with that tremendous stride of his. He's catching him, but now, sudden disaster. Cramp and a pulled muscle stop Wint dead. He staggers in agony from the track, and with him go Jamaica's hopes for the race. On went the Americans, and Whitfield raced home to an easy win with France in second place. Once more we return to the marathon, and now the leader is Etienne Gailly of Belgium, a brave but a very weary runner coming back along the Olympic way. Fate was close behind in the form of Cabrera of Argentina, tough and still full of going. First into the arena, the exhausted Gailly received a hero's ovation. Only the gallant Belgian's will drove him on as Cabrera shot past him into the lead. Remarkably fresh after his long ordeal, Cabrera comes up to the finish, the marathon victor of 1948. And now, a heartening sight to British eyes as Tom Richards finishes a good second. Half blind with fatigue, Gaye stops, but realizing there are still a few more yards to go, staggers off. The finish at last, and Gaye collapses, a great-hearted loser. A handshake between winner and runner-up, but when the time came to mount the rostrum, one face was vacant, that of Etienne Gailly, too ill to appear. Each man had run a great race, showing in equal measure those qualities which are the Olympic ideal.